In this video, I'm going to be talking about some settings that are incredibly useful for all players. Now, you may not take advantage of all of these, but there's going to be many things in here that if you don't know what most of the settings do or things that you can take advantage of in here, then it should be pretty useful. If you found this video helpful or if you do enjoy it in any way whatsoever, or if you learn something new, please do leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And there's lots of stuff in these settings that you can take advantage of. If you enjoy the content and you would like some other content, more sort of like gameplay, play or stream highlights or edited stuff and some other stuff coming in the future as well there is a patron link in the description where you can get some patron only content and you get access to all of that and it does support the channel as well which is very appreciated otherwise well, let's go i am happy to tell you guys that this video is sponsored by flexi spot a few weeks ago now flexi spot sent me out a e7 standing desk it was incredible i thought it was by far the best desk i have ever used and it completely changed my whole work experience in the sense that now rather than spending up to 15 hours a day with how long i sit at this computer i can actually press one of the buttons and have it raise up and be perfect for me to stand out and work stood so i can like stretch my legs i don't have to be sat with my back hurting it has made a world of difference and when i got this desk i I couldn't recommend it enough. Once again, FlexiSpot has sent me out another product. They have sent me a BS8 chair. I have for a long time now needed a proper chair to support my back. But let me tell you, until I sat in this chair, I had no idea how bad it really was. And I'm not overselling this. This was my reaction. And I messaged plenty of people telling them the exact same thing. If you don't have an ergonomic chair, I could not recommend this enough it is in absolutely incredible and i went way too long without having a correct chair that supports your back and provides an absolutely incredible amount of comfort this bs8 chair comes in gray or black and what a better opportunity to know than this chair goes on sale for a one day flash sale every single wednesday along with the fact that during spring there is a sale of up to 33 percent off but honestly guys i genuinely can't tell you enough how much difference flexi spot has made to my actual working day with being able to stand up and edit and also have a chair that supports my back correctly it has made a world of difference so do check out the link in the description and the pinned comment and thank you so much flexi spot for sponsoring this video Okay, so first on this list is something that is going to allow you to have a better control, in my opinion, of your camera. So normally your camera might be locked to something like around about this distance uh, if you don't change it. But if you change the setting, you can zoom out a lot more, giving you better views in either certain places where like boss fights may be better. Like the Arclade saw it works really well. Um, and it's just good to be able to have a big wide field of view in some situations now obviously normally you're not going to go that far but if you go into uh, settings and then go down to camera which is going to be quite surprising right and then go to camera mode if you pick either freedom or freedom classic then you'll be able to zoom out a lot further than normal if i just go to normal which is going to be modern you're going to see that my camera doesn't zoom out quite as far like it stops here right this is as far as i can go but then if i change it to the other one which is uh, freedom I can then keep going even further and get a much bigger field of view. So this is definitely useful in some situations. The difference between regular freedom and freedom classic is say, for example, if I surge now, my character will go ahead and then my screen will catch up. But if I'm on freedom classic, then my character will always be locked in the middle and the camera won't have that, that smooth sort of transition. I just prefer the other way. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's go to the next one. This next one is going to be very useful, especially for PVMers, but it's useful for anyone, really. It really, really is. And what this is, is action bar binding. So you can find action bar binding by, again, going into settings and then going to combat and action bars and then going to action bar binding. Nice and easy. In here, what you can do is you can set it up so that your action bars here, you can actually have them automatically switch when you equip a specific weapon style. So, for example, here, if I pick melee dual wield or any range style, for example, I can change these around and I can have it change. So if I look at my action bar, I'm wearing a staff right now. If I click to my range weapons, you're going to see that it automatically swaps to the range combat style. And if I click to my melee ones, it's going to change the other thing but i've used this bar to use an example i don't use melee but it used to change to a melee action bar but the same goes again if i go back to magic it's going to change to the magic action bar as well so this can be very very useful to do all you want to do is come in here make sure you've got it enabled on this and then afterwards 
just select the uh, the style that you want to do and then once you've done that you can change the action bar pick which one it is this action bar one two three whatever or the main one uh, and then you can pick which action bar that is out of this now you can see some of these in here are named and i wanted to include this in this because you can actually name your action bars as well so that it's more convenient here so i know this is melee range magic and this is my defense one down here by going into action bar scrolling down and you'll see change action bar preset names so you can pick which action bar it is and then you can click this and you can actually name out of a list of stuff here there's a lot of stuff just like when you do a banking preset and it can be pretty useful for saving you a bit of time on knowing where you're at when you're trying to do your action bars next up is something that is going to help you out when you're trying to make a nice tidy interface so back into settings go into interfaces and then go down to appearance now in here, you're going to have something called slim headers and hide title bars when locked. Now the reason you want this done or most people want this done is because it makes it nice and clean and tidy and slim like this. But if you want to take both of these, you're going to notice it takes up a bit more room. It looks a little bit more clunky and it shows what sort of stuff is. So it shows your backpack, your one equipment, and it tells you what this is. Now you could hide this and just not have slim headers, um, but you, you, don't, you, just, you just want to have both of these done, in my opinion. It makes it nice and clean and tidy. It just looks nicer and you can fit more stuff. You get more room out of it, right? So in my opinion, I would definitely have both of these ticked. But again, this is a personal preference thing. So you do you, but now you know how you can do that. The next thing that I'm going to mention is being able to destroy things like your potion flasks or anything like that. Uh, many different things as well when you drink the last dose or when it gets used. So you can see the inventory gets used. This can be useful in a lot of situations for saving inventory space or just being very convenient. Now the way you want to do this is come into here and then you're going to want to find inventory. So you're going to go to interfaces, then inventory. And then in inventory you're going to see destroy empty containers now in here you can tick all the different things that will get destroyed when you use them so you can see at the moment destroy empty bowls when eating and that i've got ticks and i've got trying to drink beer glasses when drinking um found those with potion all these sort of things and this just keeps your inventory nice and clean especially when pvming so anything with food um, will get destroyed anything with um drinking a potion will get destroyed and give them that inventory space back you don't have to have these done so if it is happening and you want it undone then obviously just untick it uh, but this can be very useful uh, for lots of different things and so just come into here come that to inventory tick the ones you don't want to be having them and uh, there you go this next one is going to bring us out of interfaces and go down to item drops so we're going to open up the item drop setting and you can see in here that if we go to loot beams we can actually set the value of the loot beam so obviously when you get a high value drop um you get a notification via a loot beam over that pile of loot to tell you that there's something in there that is valuable but in here you can actually change this to whatever you want between 1000 and 1 million so if you wanted to you could set this to 500,000 and you can have that set to that so any drop above 500,000 gives you a notification but anything below that doesn't and it just means that if you're afking something and there's something there that's maybe worth 300k you set this to 200,000 instead and that way anything above that including the 300k drop will give you a loot beam and you know that you've got it so this can be pretty useful and in many situations for slayer um, or if it's just irritating you getting a loot beam every time you kill something um, this is definitely something you can actually mess around with but in here there's a few other options as well like um just specific loot beams and all this sort of stuff so have a look through there too but you can set the value here and it can be pretty useful coming out of the item drops we're going to head down to chat and social this one's really useful for anyone who does pvm towards the end game or maybe you're pvming with a friend and they're a high level than you or anything like this but either way accept aid can be helpful in many different situations in fact i would have this on anyway because sometimes you'll be running through wars and someone will group venge and you'll get that buff and it's pretty cool it's convenient but what this does is it allows you to accept aid or help from other players now one thing i would suggest doing is turning off the tally other one i have this set to nobody the rest are all set to everybody and then you can sort of manage them from there but i have tally other turned off because there is literally no reason for anybody to be able to tell me like it, there's no point there's, i don't know there's no reason for this so i have it off because people used to this for like lures and stuff i don't know if they can anymore because the wilderness changes but just have it off anyway but everything else have it on reason being is there is many spells in the game that help you out especially uh, in pvm and um, one of them is intercept Having accept aid on allows someone who you're PVMing with to intercept you, which means they'll take the damage that you would have taken instead of you. 
so that if you are in a fight and you're struggling, they can incept you, keep you alive, especially if they know you're going to die. Pretty damn useful. But also there's other spells out in the Lunar spell book that can heal you. Um, there's many other things as well, like curing poison. Have these on because you never know. There's going to be situations where you want to use it. And if you don't have them on, you have to find them. Uh, but yeah, these are definitely useful. And I, it's always a little bit surprising when I'm PVMing with someone on stream, for example. And I try to intercept them because I know they're going to die. And it says that this person doesn't have accept aid on. And I'm like, what? Get it on. Put it on. I can save you. You would have lived. So get accept aid on, guys. This next one I mentioned in a previous video, but I'm going to show you once again. You're going to tell me. You're going to, you're going to show me. What? I'm going to show you that I'm going to teleport to Lumbridge here. As you can see, as I come, it's kind of smooth, a little bit laggy. But like as I come in here, they just immediately loads the area around me. However, there's a setting in graphics called loading screens. Now, if you have this enabled, especially on a lower-end PC, it can be useful. When you teleport somewhere, you're going to get a loading screen, and then it will put you in the area. This can kind of feel a little bit, like, mm, unimmersive, I guess. For example, if I go back to Lumbridge here, you're going to see that it does break that smoothness, and it just feels, it just feels a little bit not as, as smooth. So what you can do, as you can see here, loading map, and then it does it, is you can untick that, and you can just... You can get an advantage from this as well, not just from the whole feeling of it, but it's faster too. So like if I do loading screens off, I can immediately start surging, even if the zone hasn't fully loaded in. So you can get little move off a little bit quicker. But definitely take advantage of this if your PC can handle it, because hey, it's it's nice. It's definitely nice to have. We've got a couple more left, but the next one is gonna be about saving you some keybinds. Again, I have mentioned this in the past, but I'm gonna mention it again because it's useful and I want it to be in this video, which eventually I'll rename to something like uh, settings that every runescape player should take advantage of or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, if you come into settings, go down to controls and then find where it says action bar here. At the bottom of this section, right at the bottom, you're gonna see some action bar options, so some keybind options, things that you would normally need to keybind on a slot. So it saves you some slots from doing it here instead. So for example, I have my familiar action and special attack set, set, set to shift V and shift five. So this means that I don't have to have them on here because normally you could come into here, uh, find your special attack, which is there, and you could drag that onto the action bar. But because I've got this key bound, don't need to do that. Target cycling's in here as well. Auto retaliates on here, quick prayer, uh, sheathing and unsheathing your weapon, quick heal, all of these sort of things, your area loot. There's many things in here that are very useful. So take advantage of them, save yourself some um, action bar slots and get these key bound in there, and especially these two, super useful. Okay, so our last one is going to be something that many of you guys are probably going to be like, oh, I do this. And then many of you are also probably going to be like, that is, no, you can't do this. But I'm going to mention it anyway. So when I was designing my interface here, I tried to copy somebody's very specifically. Like, I didn't do it identical, but I wanted the exact same amount of stuff, and I just moved them in a different order, right? And I couldn't fit it. I was like, how can they fit it? This doesn't make sense. They have the same resolution as me. The answer was, if you go into settings and go to graphics, if you play in full screen mode, you'll actually get more space than if you're in windowed. So if I go to windowed now, you're going to see that some stuff doesn't fit. Like, this doesn't fit in here anymore, and, and I, I can't get it down there. It will not work. But if I go back to full screen, it will fit. You get a little bit extra space, meaning you can fit some more stuff on here. So if you do want more, um, like, user interface space, just a little bit, and you are okay with playing in full screen mode, then try full screen mode out. See if it works for you. And uh, I guess this wouldn't apply to anyone with like an ultra wide monitor or anything, but people with regular monitors like myself, it's definitely something you can do. And I prefer it on full screen anyway. It is just, it's just nice. But yeah, there we go. And that's our last one for today. Anyway, guys, obviously this video was rather quick to make. It was nice and easy to just cover the settings, but I haven't, I realized I hadn't actually made a video talking specifically just about loads of settings to take advantage of. I've included stuff like this, like quality of life, things you should know about, but it wasn't just about the settings thing, and there's a few things in here I haven't mentioned in the past. Um, while there is things I have mentioned, I figured I'd make a whole rounded video for it that maybe people can use for a while in the future. But anyway, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please do leave a like, sub to the channel if you are new around here, uh, Patreon and channel members, you guys support the channel a ton, so thank you all so much. Your name will be on the screen during the outro here. Thank you all so, so much. If anyone else is interested in some more patreon -like content, like I mentioned at the beginning, head over to my Patreon link in the description and check it out there and see if it's worth chucking a dollar there to support the channel and also get some more content. But otherwise, please do check out FlexiSpot. Their, uh, comment, their, their, their links will be in the description and the pinned comment. But otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.